Hello, welcome to Switched On. My name's Paul, and I wanted to give some coverage to a needy game that I picked up a little while ago and have been meaning to get to it on the channel, and that is called uh, Mana Spark. The game's called Mana Spark. This comes from a software studio called Behemoth, and I picked this one up a little while ago as it was on sale. I did a, a video series, which you can check out below, of indie games that were under £5, and I picked up a few games on a whim just because they were cheap and I wanted to make the video. And uh, actually, most of them turned out to be really good. And this is one of those. So what this is... Oh, also, by the way, before we go any further, I'm going to be giving a copy of this away. That's the main reason, or one of the main reasons for doing the video, is uh, the developers have reached out and given me a copy of the game to give away. So I've been wanting to do some content for the channel, and I've now got the giveaway, so it seems a perfect time to do it. So what this game is, is a, a roguelike, randomly generated, dungeon crawling game. Now, I won't spoil too much, we'll have a quick look here as I started in the, the camp, but you build that up, you basically start with this wagon and uh, you build the rest of the bits up as you unlock things in the games, like a roguelike progression system. So we're going to take you through um, some of the early levels, just going to play this for a little while just while we talk about the, the game and the giveaway. So we've got this starting character here who's a uh, a hunter, he's got a bow and arrow, and you need to work your way through these rooms. And it reminded me a little bit of uh, Binding of Isaac when I first played it. Um, a lot to do with that map in the top corner, very much like the Binding of Isaac. And obviously, the viewpoint is very similar as well. And also, the sort of the gameplay techniques you, you go into these rooms, and the door locks behind you, and you have to clear the area of enemies to reopen the door and to move on to the next area. So we've done that now. It's kind of a twin stick shooter. You're moving around with the left stick here and aiming your arrow with the right stick. Now this particular character cannot move and fire at the same time. So when you're lining up a shot, he now cannot move. He can only aim. So you aim with the right stick, hold down ZR to load your arrow and then let go of ZR to fire. And you basically, on each level, you're looking for these staircases to take you down to the next floor, and eventually you'll get to a boss. And these levels, whilst they're not, whilst each screen isn't randomly generated, so like this level block isn't random, their ordering within the current run is. So, gives the game some randomization. And these plants are a little bit of a pain to kill. You need to get them when they're open and avoid the explosive flowers that they fire at you. Oh god, I'm awful for this one. Right, there we go. Ah, they have got a, a roll as well on the left bumper button left as it is on the switch. Let's you do a roll. Kill that enemy now. And you also do have a, kind of an ability or an extra weapon that you can take with you. At the moment I've got a bear trap as you can see on the left hand side there indicated by ZL. Now this room doesn't or hasn't unlocked yet, so it indicates there's something left to do in this room. So there's either a switch or an enemy hiding away somewhere. Well, actually, you look at the map there, there's a unmapped room to the bottom right. So there's probably going to be a switch in there that we need to activate. So the enemy's intelligence is another really great thing in this game. Especially these little goblin fellas on their own, harmless enough. But if you find yourself on a or in a screen and there's like a boar or a wolf, they'll actually jump on top of the animal, ride it and uh, attack you. Because on their own, um, boars won't attack you unless you attack them. Um, but once uh, a goblin jumps on top, they sort of commandeer it. So here's uh, an item that we find in this kind of well. A Spelunker's Eggplant. Health up, chance of enemies dropping gold. 
So we've got that bottom right now. You can amass all different sorts of items and buy them. But here we are. We've unlocked that bottom left-hand room, found the stairs, and we go down to the next level. So here, after every three rooms, I think, uh, you get one of these, what's called a peculiar room. That's kind of a, a safe spot. Now you have this chest here and you put all the runes you collected. If you've seen the little black and blue discs that I were picking up, um, they are runes and you use those as currency to buy permanent upgrades. So when you get to this room, you walk up to this chest and it sort of banks them all for you. Now here you've got a, um, well basically you can get a power up, but to get it, you've got to step on this spike trap. So you're gonna lose one health to get a power up. Here you can pay uh, five coins to get this randomly generated power up. This one is a like a turret that shoots arrows. Or over here you can pay one coin and it randomly generates three upgrades for you. So this one, uh, projectile, uh, projectiles deal double damage after bouncing off of walls. Shoot one more projectile, more chance to find the other twin. A bit cryptic and damage way up and health down so it gives you extra damage but takes health away i quite like the sound of this shoots one more projectile so we'll get that and we can take a nap which i think saves your progress so far so this is a kind of like a, a halfway house a restroom through the level you buy yourself an upgrade so it starts picking up and getting a bit more tricky now you can see the map in the top right hand corner a lot more difficult and these little goblin archers see that one there like again good ai sort of retreated so if you can tempt this one onto a spike trap he's having none of it and we've got these crossbow wielding skeletons to deal with now and they don't muck around and they've got shields so you kind of need to Get in behind them. Oh, and there's friendly fire as well. As you probably saw just then. He shot his mate in the back. Can't. Um, we can see if we can sneak in behind. And there we go. So these, as I was saying, these blue and black discs are the runes. We've got two at the moment. And this is health, but we don't need any health at the moment. Take out those goblins, and let's open up the doors to the next room. Axe wielding lunatic lunges at you with his axe, but it puts him out of breath. So you do get like a window of opportunity to take him out. And there we go. Pick up some gold. Nothing else. Then we activated that switch you might have saw. There we go. Wait for him to get exhausted and then we finish him off. This big room here, so we've got a goblin straight away. Switch. Didn't like that ominous sounding noise. Doing alright so far. This has been a pretty good run. I'm get hit with one of those crossbows from those skeletons. That really smarts. Let's sneak up behind him, stab him in the back. Taking care of business. So we still don't need any health. Another little goblin fella over here, and one up here. Oh dear, now we've got a wolf here. See the uh, the axe guy there jumped on top of that wolf. Started riding him around. So we've got an item well here. See what we get. So this is a Isaac Sorrow damage up. So that's good. Right, we've got one more room to explore in the bottom left hand corner. That will probably be our stairway out of here. Now, if it hasn't already, we might lose the uh, the video of me shortly. Because for some reason my phone 
doesn't record much footage, even though there's plenty of space. Ah, oh, it's actually gone off now. Perfect timing. So, here we are, the library. I think this is the last room uh, before the boss. So this may well be where our run ends. Ooh. So we've got the knowledge. So as I was saying at the start of the video, you can uh, win a copy of this game. All you have to do is subscribe to the channel, like this video, and leave me a comment below. And I will enter you into the draw. Do a few of these draws on the channel quite regularly when the developers are kind enough to send me spare codes. Avoiding this massifies laser beam. Our first hit. Have we done him? No. I guess we beat him. There we go. Stairway to heaven. tunnels too so yeah like um like this video and subscribe if you'd like to win a copy and i will draw a winner day are we today is it tuesday today let's draw a winner on friday let's give somebody that friday feeling so i say friday evening six o'clock uk time or thereabouts i'll pick a winner and send you a code. I believe it's a European EU code for mana spark. It's a really excellent, excellent game. As I say, for the money it cost as well at the time, and it does regularly go on sale, so keep an eye out for it going on sale. I think this was around about £4.50. Put in plenty of hours. Oh! It's all going a bit wrong. We're getting swamped and poisoned and attacked by fireballs. Could really do one of those chicken legs. We negated earlier, and there we go. So we lost a bunch of runes there, as you see. Needed to get to one of those safe rooms and stick those in a box. But we didn't quite make it. So I hope you enjoyed that. We can, um, you can after a certain while, you can um, try your run again with some randomised loot. Or we can head back to camp and spend the runes that we did collect in the loot box and unlock basically other little um, characters that give you permanent upgrades, but I'm not going to spoil any of those. We'll just come off of that screen. So yeah, hope you like that. As I say, it's a really good indie game. Definitely recommend picking it up. Um, if you want to be in the chance of winning a copy, just like this video, subscribe to the channel, and drop me a comment below, and I'll pick somebody on Friday, round right about 6 o'clock in the evening. But until then, thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next video. Cheers, guys. Bye.